Hey, how's it going? Brian here from RVWithTito.com and I'm checking out this new, uh, this new transfer switch that I'm gonna get installed today and I wanna kinda take you through it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a slightly different uh, type of transfer switch uh, from your standard transfer switch in that it's designed to uh, work with, with an off-grid setup. If you have a standalone inverter and say a standalone separate battery charger. And uh, it's also a 30 amp transfer switch. So this is for us 30 amp folks, not the 50 amp folks. And uh, what I'm noticing about this, this is actually from um, GoPower. And uh, what I was looking inside the, inside the lid here, and it actually says, says it's, uh, it's from Progressive Dynamics. So <laughs> GoPower, put their label on it, but it's an actual, actually a progressive dynamics transfer switch. So one unique feature that I really like about this is that uh, it also has a separate uh, output for your battery charger. And you know, previously in another video, I had to hook up this relay to automatically disconnect my, uh, my converter charger whenever my inverter was running. So the cool thing about this is that it has all of that switching built in already. So the, the battery charger is, is only wired to the, uh, to the shore power side, so you should only see the battery charger come on when you're on shore power. So yeah, this is a pretty straightforward setup and uh, pretty useful, I think, for, for you if you want to uh, use a standalone inverter to power all of the uh, circuits, the all AC circuits, in your RV, just mostly receptacles and stuff probably. And, and you don't wanna to have to do any additional wiring and wire up a sub panel or you know, do any of that fancy stuff. You can just do it all through this transfer switch. So let's uh, take a closer look here in the shop. We'll do a little testing and, uh, and then we'll get it set up in the RV. All right, we're all set up to, uh, to test this out, but before we do that, I wanna do a quick review of what a transfer switch does, just in case you don't know. But we've got two AC, 120 volt AC inputs going into this switch, and we have one output. Now the output is gonna to go to the main AC service in our RV, but it can only take input from one of these at a time. Now this one is gonna be attached to our shore power connection. So when we're plugged into shore power, we're gonna have power on that line. And this black one here is gonna be plugged into our inverter. So our inverter, we're gonna be running off of our battery system. Now, like I said, I don't want both of those powering the system at the same time. So the job of this switch is to switch between one or the other of these inputs. Now the way that it's gonna know is it's gonna sense the power on this particular line. In this case, it's gonna be the shore power input. So when it senses that there is electricity flowing through this shore power connection, it's gonna use that connection to power our system. Now when that drops off, it's gonna then switch back to use the inverter power if, they're, if the inverter's on. So that's how that works. And that just kind of means that the shore power has priority in this particular switch. So it's primarily going to run the shore power if it's available. Now, this uh, setup here, this other output, this is something unique to this transfer switch. And this is uh, going to power our battery charger or our converter charger, if you have one of those, like I do. And uh, the key to this is that we only want that to be powered when we're on shore power. We don't want to power that when we're on running off of our inverter from our batteries. Because since this is going to be charging our batteries, this is going to be powered from the batteries, we don't want the batteries to be charging themselves. So that's not a good thing. So we'll see that this only gets powered on, that's going to be this 
indicator here, we should only see power to that when we are connected to shore power. Okay, so when I'm gonna power this on, you'll see that this is the main output here. So we'll see that uh, there's power to the system. You'll see 120 volts show up here. And this indicator light here is, if there's two yellows, this is just a regular AC circuit tester. That's how we'll know if the, uh, if the battery charger is powered up. So we should only see that when we have AC power. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna power on the inverter. So this is gonna apply power to this, this cable here coming in and we'll see what happens. We should see, there we go. So that's simulating that I'm on inverter power. So I have 120 volts powering the system. So that's coming out through the inverter and, uh, my, and my battery charger is still off. Now, what if I were to turn on my shore power? Let's do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have power coming in on this white cord here, which is gonna be my shore power connection. Turn that on. Okay, we see that right away the, the charger fires up and then the, uh, the switch actually is on a 20 to 40 second delay. So it's gonna take a few seconds for it to switch and we should hear a clunk and then it'll switch to shore power. Let's wait for that. Okay, and he, there it is. So we heard that. So now it's powering the system from this uh, shore power cable and not the inverter. Okay, so I have power to my battery charger and I have power coming in from shore power. So now let's uh, turn off the shore power and it should switch off right away. Okay, so you heard it switch back to inverter power and now the power coming through here to the rest of our RV system here is coming from my inverter and my battery charger is off. That's pretty slick, right? So now I just need to kind of take this apart, disconnect all these little test cables and uh, we'll take it out to the RV, remove the other transfer switch which happens to be uh, busted by the way. It broke about, uh, it's been flaky and it died, I don't know, a few months ago. I haven't even been using it since we normally run off of uh, inverter. But yeah, I'll take it apart, put this one in its place and uh, should be up and running. So the, the transfer switch is out. Here's the uh, the old one. Don't need that anymore. So that's a goner. So here's the uh, here's my main AC line out to my box over here. So this is going to be feeding my entire RV with AC service. And uh, this is my shore power input here. And this is going directly to my inverter which uh, used to be the cord that went to my generator, but I don't have a generator anymore. So my two inputs here and my output. So I just have to wire that up. And also there's a, a main chassis ground here that I also want to connect to that, uh, that negative grounding bus bar. All right, well, it's all wired up and uh, I did an initial test and it, and it seems to be working the way it's uh, supposed to. So let me show you uh, how it's set up and uh, then we'll do a, a little run through and I'll uh, answer some questions that I know you're gonna have. Okay, let me uh, put some light on this here. All right, so here's the transfer switch. All right, I'm gonna loosen the lid off. Yeah, we've got our uh, inverter coming in here on this side 
and that's wired up the way we did in the uh, shop. The shore power comes in here and uh, then the output goes here. So that's the AC output to the uh, to the breaker box. Now this other one here, don't worry about that. That's just, uh, I just wired in a little uh, cord so it turns on a light when my charger kicks on. So I can see from the front when my charger's on. I wired that up a while back. Um, I'll link to the other video that I that I did that. Now here's the uh, output to the to the uh, actual charger. So this uh, is just basically wired up as a uh, just as a power plug like a 15 amp plug. There's actually a 15 amp fuse back there in the uh, transfer switch. And I just wired a plug to it and some electrical wire. Took the uh, AC connections that are coming out of the charger from the converter charger and just wired it into uh, the other end of this uh, AC power cable and then created this plug on this end so I can just disconnect it quickly there. Prior to this it would uh, it would be hooked to a circuit breaker on the breaker board and uh, since it's being switched in here it's not uh, linked into the circuit breaker anymore so I have another uh, circuit breaker I can use for another circuit. Right now I have the inverter running so there is AC power here coming through this plug here for my inverter and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my shore power connection real quick and you should be able to uh, see and uh, hear that uh, that coil click over to the uh, shore power. So let me go turn that on real quick. All right, hear that click? That was it. So now I'm on my shore power. And you might hear a fan because I'm using a, just a portable power station to simulate shore power. I'll turn it back off. Now you might be wondering what to do if you have an onboard generator and shore power connection going through an existing transfer switch. Now this isn't going to replace that function and then add an inverter. So you'll have to still share that shore power connection with the generator and maybe even go through that original transfer switch. So it just makes it a little bit more complicated. This may not be the setup for you if that's what you have. but. Uh, but it will work with just an inverter and um, shore power connection. Now, if you have a, a portable generator or you know a generator that you plug in with your shore power cable, then that's perfectly fine because as far as the RV is concerned, it all comes in through that one shore power connection. Now, the other thing is that if your uh, inverter and charger is all combined into like this uh, hybrid inverter, like a Victron MultiPlus or something, that isn't something you'd want to use with this uh, transfer switch because uh, the charger is all built into the uh, inverter and uh, this is designed to be used with a standalone charger and a standalone inverter and a shore power connection and then manage all three of those things together. So if you have any questions just go ahead and drop them in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them or I'm sure somebody else will. And uh, if you got something out of this video you know give it a thumbs up and uh, hope you'll subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.